hi everyone welcome to the cft trading course today we are on to lesson number three in this lesson we'll be focusing on candlesticks what they are how they operate and a whole lot more all right so before we get into it let us first look at our risk warning now trading forex or trading foreign currencies can be a challenging and potentially profitable opportunity for investors however before deciding to participate in forex trading you should carefully consider your investment objectives your level of experience and your risk appetite most importantly do not invest money you cannot afford to lose okay in every in every lesson we will keep on going through this risk warning because it is really important to know your risk your your risk when it comes to forex trading so we will, i will leave this here for a few seconds so you can read through it and make sure you understand everything all right let's now candlesticks okay also called japanese candlesticks all right they're called Candle, candlesticks because they look like candles really now what are what are candlesticks candlesticks are price indicators used in the financial market to represent price movement of a financial instrument over a specific period of time every candlestick represent price movement for a particular instrument over a specific period of time all right now that is one candlestick but if we are when we have a combination of candlesticks they that makes up a chart here's a candlestick chart okay every candlestick represent a certain time frame that is one thing you need to really understand okay now a combination of these candlestick of these candlesticks make up a chart all right we read the charts to understand how the markets are going okay we use the chart to actually help us predict future movement of the markets because we nobody knows how the markets are going to operate but the charts help us to actually speculate better to actually analyze the markets and know or have an idea of how the markets are going to move in the future all right candlesticks all right now we get two types of candlesticks already we get the positive candlestick and negative candlesticks all right we get two candlesticks we get the positive and the negative in most cases they are separated by two colors you can either use green or red other people use the same color but the normal ones that you're going to notice especially when you're a beginner is the green one and the red one all right the green one it's a positive candle one it's a positive candle and then the red one is a negative candle now on a positive candle we have the body we have the upper wig and the lower wig all right so it is really important to understand those we got this upper wig all right this will be our upper wig and then we got the body which is this one this is our body and then we got the lower wig all right on both candles we have the same thing all right they are represented in the same way all right but what separates the two it's their opening it's their open and close value all right on the positive on the positive one it opens a positive candle is also called a bullish candle okay and then the, the negative candle we call it the bearish the reason they call it the bullish the the, the positive one is called the bullish market it's because it is a it means the can the, the the movement was going up all right whenever a bull a bull attacks it always starts from the bottom and picks you and then picks you from the ground and then throws you up so that's why they call it the, a, a bullish market 
all right that's how a bull fights whenever it, it, it is fighting you know, it keeps it from the ground and pulls and, and pushes up all right and a bear to stand on its feet and stumps you down so that that is the reason they call it this one is called the bullish market and the other one a bearish market all right now on the bullish market we understand that this is well, on this green on this green one we have the open price all right that's where the market opened at that particular moment say this 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 candle was a five minute candle all right and then it was 10 o'clock now it will op at, at 10 o'clock it will open at that point all right and then at let's say at one plus at, at one plus 10 it went this low okay it went to the lowest point and then at three plus ten and at two plus ten it was still still fluctuating and then it so happened that at three plus, at three plus ten it went very high okay which is where we had our high and then four plus ten it was also just between the high and and the whole other movements and then immediate when it says five plus ten it closed at this position all right now this is a f a five minute candle all right that is just an example to tell you that is a five minute candle all right now let's go to the bearish one all right now take take the bearish one as though it was also a bearish candle all right as though it was a five minute candle all right this is a bearish candle but take it as it was a five minute candle all right now 10 o'clock it opened right there on the top all right and then we had at one plus ten it went that high at one plus ten the market moved up okay that was at one plus ten and then at two plus ten it was between the high and the open and then all of a sudden we had this crazy volatility that the market became so volatile and it went down quite a lot and then at 3 plus 10 the market was just at this low point at 3 plus 10 okay the market was just playing at this low point that is 3 plus 10 and then 4 plus 10 the market was just between the low and the open it was just fluctuating between those two points and then at 5 plus 10 because this is a five minute candle at 5 plus it has to close and then it closed right there just above the low the low point all right that was a five plus ten that's where the market that that's where the, the the candle closed all right like i said one candle represent a certain time frame if this was a one minute candle this will be this whole movement okay it will open the open the high the low and the close will happen over a period of a minute Okay, if it's a five minute, that means what that that all that action, all the open, the high, the close, and the low happened over five minutes. If it was an hour, it happened over a period of an hour. All right, so every candlestick represents that. Okay, depending on the settings that you're going to put on your trading platform. Okay, and if you if you if you're trading on a five minute time frame. You need to understand that one candle represents five minutes. On the on the fifteen minute, one candle represents fifteen minutes. Okay, that is one thing you of you really need to understand because it is important in order to learn how to read candle candlesticks. Okay, candlesticks are part of technical analysis. Candles is really really important. Now, let's look at this bullish candle. On a deeper on a deeper level okay let's look at it more closely now okay we're gonna include more numbers we're gonna include prices okay we understand this was let's say it was a five minute candle but let's now read it on uh, using prices okay now the mark let's say the candle opens at 80 dollars okay the reason i'm using dollars is because most it's 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 really important to understand that most trading platforms will use dollars or euros okay but the dollar is one of the currencies that it's like most of one of the stable currency okay it's one exchange currency that a lot of people 
are comfortable with. A lot of countries, they just accept the dollar. It's some sort of... It unites a lot of people. So it's some sort of a unity currency. I don't know how to put it, but that's how the, the, the dollar is. All right, so I'm going to use dollars here, but then you, we can also use the same example in, in dollars as we can use rands. It is the same example, okay? All you have to do is just to change the currency and we can input rands or we can just say dollars. It's no problem, but at the moment, we're going to work with dollars, all right? So in this bullish candle, it opened at $80, all right? And then it went low. Okay, the, the the markets went down to sixty dollars. Okay, it went down to sixty dollars. It was still open, but then it went as low as to sixty dollars. Then something happened, and the market rise rose to one hundred and twenty dollars. All right. Now, taking this as a five minute time frame, that means round about. Let's just say it's a five minute time frame and it's from 10 o'clock round about 30 past 10 the markets went up to as as high as 120 dollars Okay, it opened at 80 dollars, which was at, at 10 o'clock. It opened at 80 dollars and then at 1 past 10 It went to 60 dollars, but then all of a sudden it's Went up to 120 dollars at 3 past 10 Okay, at four past ten, it was still fluctuating between hundred and twenty dollars and eighty dollars. All right, and then as soon as it hit five past ten, where the market was supposed to close, and it closed at a hundred dollars. Five past ten, it closed at hundred dollars. Okay, now we have the open price, which was eighty dollars. Then it went as low as sixty dollars. Then it went high. It went up. Okay, just went up. Two hundred and twenty dollars, but at the end of the at, at the end of that time frame, which is we said was five minutes, at the end of that five minute, the price was hundred dollars. Okay, now just because the open price is lower than the close price, that gives that signals you that this is a bullish candle. Okay, it's going to be a green candle. All right, when the 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 open is lower than the close you need to understand that is a bullish candle and when the, the open is higher than the close you need to understand that okay this is a bearish candle all right so the next candle will open at hundred dollars that's the price okay because when the previous candle left off the the next candle will have to continue where the previous candle closed okay the previous close of a of a previous candle becomes an open for the next for the next candle okay because it, it's a continuation that's how it goes let's look at the bearish candle okay we're also going to use numbers let's just say this candle is a five minute candle all right we're using a five minute time frame and we're on a five minute candle all right now, the market opens at $100. Just as that previous candle closed at $100, this one will open at $100. Okay? As it opens at $100, it's 6 past 10. Alright, that one closed at 5 past 10. This one opens at 6 past 10. It opens at $100. Alright? And then it says 7 past 10. It goes as so high, goes back to the highest, which was hundred and twenty dollars. All right, that is seven past ten. It went high to hundred and twenty. Right, and then something happens on the markets, and the price falls. At eight past ten, the price falls so bad that. It falls to as low as sixty dollars at eight past ten. Okay, since this is a five-minute candle, it was still 
running it was still fluctuating and the lowest it went was sixty dollars at eight plus ten okay and then nine plus ten it was still fluctuating between sixty and a hundred dollars all right still fluctuating between the open and the lowest price still fluctuating between those numbers and then at 10 past 10 it is time for the candle to close all right because it's a five minute candle it has to make sure that after five minutes it closes all right and as soon as the clock hits 10 past 10 the prices closes Okay, the price, the, 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 the candle store closes and it closes at $80. Okay, when it says 10 plus 10, the, 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 the price movement was at $80 and it closes immediately. All right, now, here's a question. What do you think the next candle will open? What pr at what price will the next candle open? Right. The answer is really simple. The next candle will open at eighty dollars. The next candle, the opening price of the next candle will be eighty dollars, because that's where the previous candle left off. Okay, the previous candle closed. It's the next candles open. All right. So that is something you also need to keep in mind. Now. We got another type of candlestick that is called a hammer. Okay. Another kind of type of candlestick is called a hammer because it's called a hammer because when, even when you look at it, it looks like a hammer. It consists of a body and a wig. All right. It doesn't have two sided wigs, but it only has one wig. Okay, it looks like a hammer. Okay, we get an, in an inverted hammer, which is also called a shooting star. And then we got a hanging man. All right. Now, while, while looking at the inverted hammer, right, the open price will be just here at the bottom. That's where the, the opening price will be at. Okay, it opened just here at the bottom. And then it went as high as just above there at the end of the week. That was the highest it went at that particular moment. Okay. Even this one, you might say it's a five minute candle. That means let's just say 10 o'clock. It opened here. The open price was here at 10 o'clock. And then at two plus 10, it was just m still moving. And then at three plus 10, it went really up okay it shot up and then went to the highest position all right and then at four plus ten it decided that you know what i'm gonna go down it went down and couldn't even pass the opening price but the same that that opening price it became the lowest point that the candle moved okay that was the lowest point it ever reached couldn't surpass that point but it, it kept on there it kept on there and then at five plus ten the candle has to close all right because this is a five minute candle five plus ten it has to close no matter where the position is the word no matter where the price movement is at it has to close all right so we got five at five plus ten the market closed and it closed just there okay just a few notches above the opening price we have our close price right now we have our opening price and then we have highest price which was just up there on the upper one on the higher week and then the lowest price that the the, the instrument went for that at that at that time was also the opening price it didn't go any lower than that okay it only played just around that point and that was our lowest price and then it closed just up there 
just the higher one and the higher end before we even took much time it closed right there okay now let's look at the hanging man all right now taking that the the hanging man candle was also a five minute candle we'll just use the same analogy okay let's just say it was 10 o'clock okay our new candle had just opened so it opened at that position okay it opened just above here that's where it opened just there it opened there and then at um one plus ten it was just there at opening and then two plus ten and then three plus ten the market just shut down crazily and then we had the lowest price just there we had the lowest price because something happened to the market and it shut down and then we had the lowest point okay it went so down that we it reached this lower pole this lower point all right and then at four plus ten it tried to move up and try to surpass the the, the opening price where it opened it tried to surpass but it couldn't just go any higher it couldn't go any higher so it just played around there and that became our highest point as it went down and tried to go back up but then couldn't surpass the opening the, op the open price point right but as soon as it was five past ten the candle had to come to a close right it had to close so as soon as it says five percent the market closed okay all of a sudden we had this hammer look like this candlestick that looks like a hammer all right and it's also called a hanging man all right now An inverted hammer or a shooting star and a hanging man. Okay. In a better situation. Okay. In an uptrend, when we are in an uptrend and then we see a hanging man, we need to understand that it might hammer the the, the price movement into the opposite direction right when we're in an uptrend and hanging a hanging man actually we see a hanging man or an inverted hammer it hammers the the, the movement in, into the opposite direction when we're in an uptrend it will hammer it in the movement to actually change direction and go on a downtrend when we're on a downtrend it will hammer the the, the price movement or the chart movement to actually go to an uptrend all right now the hammer okay the hammer hammers the market movement in the opposite direction as i have said before it hammers the the, the the market movement into the opposite direction when in an uptrend it triggers a downtrend movement when in a downtrend it triggers an uptrend movement all right now, what actually tells us that this hammer is good enough to actually influence the price movement to go into the opposite direction? Okay. In order for us to actually determine that the hammer is that is that effective to actually change the price movement, the wig has to be twice the size of the body. The longer the wig, the better. All right. Like we said before, the wig of the market into that direction. Now, in this case, we can spot the hammer at this point. All right, we can spot the hammer at this point. But the market was going down, and down, and then all of a sudden we had a hammer, and it hammered the market into the opposite direction. Right, we had a downtrend, a beautiful downtrend. 
again the market was falling and then we had a hanging man just here okay and then this hanging man hammered the direction into the opposite direction all right and then as soon as it they hammered the direction the the, move, the 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 price movement into the opposite direction we had a bit of an uptrend few we had two candlesticks which were bearish but then the the, the market continued uptrend and yet continued moving up and then all of a sudden boom we had another inverted hammer all right the inverted hammer hammered the, the, the market movement into the opposite direction as well okay it hammered the market and then all of a sudden we had a downtrend movement again all right we had a downtrend movement at this point and then we had a hanging man which hammered the, 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 the price movement into opposite direction then we had an uptrend and then that the top we had an inverted hammer that hammered the price into the opposite direction and then all of a sudden we had another downtrend again as it was continuing downturn okay it was continuing downwards a downtrend a beautiful downtrend again and then all of a sudden we had another inverted hammer which hammered the price movement into the opposite direction all right so that the market changed okay one thing i also need to raise is that just because there is a hammer doesn't guarantee that the markets will change direction all right it is just market tendency all right the reason this actually happens is because the market has a tendency of repeating okay it has a tendency of acting in similar ways more often than not okay it doesn't mean that just because we had a an inverted hammer or a hanging man the markets will move to an opposite direction to respond to that now it, it it is just what the market has acted like okay it has this thing there is this thing of called the market movement the market trend the way the market behaves okay in more in more in more cases than not it behaves in this manner all right but that doesn't guarantee that it will happen but it is really great to, to know that it has it is more likely to respond to this kind of behavior more often than not all right so we also had another hanging man just there at the upper end all right what do you think the market will happen okay chances are it might change direction and there's also chances that it might continue like that but then more often than not it will change direction all right it is really good to know that this is how the market behaves all right now we we have another candlestick which we call a doje or a doje it's called a doje so a doje actually means doubt okay doje when you see a doje the, the first way that should come to your mind is doubt okay it represents indecision all right that's where the market didn't know whether it was going up or down it was just responding to nothing there was just in undecided like it, there was you know there was too much indecision the market didn't go anywhere okay whenever you see a doji it is wise to wait until after the preceding move okay you can wait for two candles to follow or you can wait for another the next candle to follow the doji so you can know where the markets are actually heading okay now on a doji okay uh, let's just take this doji as a five minute candle okay because a doji is also a candle just an in that that just a candle that has so much indecision now a doji let's just take this doji as a five minute candle okay now i say it's 10 o'clock right the markets opened just at this point 
it opens here and then at 2 plus 10 the market shot up and then we had the highest point just there at the top we had the highest point at 2 plus 10 and then at 3 plus 10 the market decided to change direction okay the market went down and then we had the lowest point just there okay at 3 plus 10 the market decided to go down and then at 4 plus 10 the markets were just fluctuating between the lowest point and the opening price that was around about 4 plus 10 and then at 5 plus 10 it was time for the candle to close but then the might the, the, the the, the price movement was just playing around that opening price. Okay, it was just playing just around that opening price. And then at 5 plus 10, it closed. And it closed at the same position that it had opened. Okay, now we call this an indecisive movement or indecisive candle. It didn't actually do anything. It opened and closed at the same point okay we, we there is also something that the price there the, the open and the close may vary but the their difference is so little that you can see there was so much indecision the candle didn't know the market didn't know whether it was going up or down okay the candle is not bullish no it is it bearish okay it is just indecisive okay it's an indecisive candle it doesn't support that the, the markets were moving up or they're moving down whether the bulls were stronger than the bears they were just now there we get three kinds of dodging get three types of dodging we get the long the long we the, the long legged doge we got the gravestone doge and then we got the dragon fly doge all right now the long legged doge the buy price will be it will open here and then you will have the highest point right there at, 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 at the upper week at the end of the upper week and then we have the lowest point just below the lower week and then it closes at the same point where the open price may may be right that is the long legged doge okay it doesn't open far from the it, it opens and closes almost in the same position even though the the price the open and the close price may vary but they are so close to each other it is an indecisive candle okay now coming to the gravestone doge okay Coming to the, to the gravestone doge, it will open just there at the bottom. That is the open price. And then the candle, the, the price went up. Okay. It shot up and then we had the highest price. Right there at the top, we had the highest price because the markets were moving up. It seems like the bulls were taking over. They, they proved to be stronger. Okay. To say at 10 o'clock, it opened here. And then at 3 plus, at 2 plus 10, the bulls shot up and then they proved to be okay you know what the bulls are stronger but then at around three plus ten the bears also came in and dominated the market all right and then it went down but couldn't really surpass the, the buy price okay it just kept playing around there and that became our lowest price all right but then uh, four plus four plus ten came. It was still fluctuating at the same at the same place. It was still still playing around the same the same the same price. And then five plus ten, where the candle was supposed to close, the the price was still playing around that same point. And all of a sudden, the market closed at the same point where we had the buy price and where was the lowest price okay it opened and closed at the same point even though the open and price the open and close price may vary slightly but 
we still have an indecisive candle all right now a great gravi a gravitational gravestone doge just like the the head they inverted him and uh, hanging man it is bearish in an uptrend and bullish in a downtrend okay it operates the same way as the inverted hammer and the hanging man all right now let's look at the dragonfly okay we'll take the dragonfly as though it was also a five minute candle all right now it was 10 o'clock and the markets opened right there 10 o'clock the candle opened right there all right and then At two past ten, it was just going down. The bulls with the, the bears were taking over. The market was going down, and at three past ten, the bulls had fought like seriously. The market had been going down so bad that the bulls were really dominating the markets. Okay, the the, the price went down, and then we had this lower price. Okay, this lowest price. This was the lowest point. This was the lowest the price had gone in that five minute in that five minute time frame okay it went that low but then at four past ten the the bulls had actually fought back okay the market had gone up to this highest point okay it, the market had gone up the bulls had pushed had pushed the market really up to the buying price okay but they couldn't push it high enough to surpass the buying price so the market just played around the buying price at around four past ten it was playing just around that and the bulls were still head on with the bears and it kept on fluctuating just around that point until five past point five past ten arrived and it was time for the candlestick to close and as soon as it says five past ten it closed at the same point where it opened and which was also the highest it had gone after suffering a major push by the bears to this lower point all right now the dragonfly doge just like the gravestone doge and the inverted hammer and the hanging man it is bearish in an uptrend when we when in an uptrend it is bearish and when in a downtrend it is bullish all right now another chart a chart where we can just get the the picture of that all right now we had this downtrend which continued smoothly yet like it was a beautiful downtrend and then we had just a side by side market there but it was still very much bearish because it was going down and then we had a long legged doge okay as soon as we had that long legged doge the markets changed direction and we had an uptrend okay over a long period of time we had a beautiful uptrend and then all of a sudden we faced another gravitational doge Okay, we know we had a gravestone doge. We have a gravestone doge. As soon as we hit that gravestone doge, it pushed the market down. We had an uptrend and then we had, we encountered a gravestone doge and all of a sudden the markets changed direction and we had a downtrend over a long period of time, right? The downtrend went Okay, we had a downtrend where the bulls dominated all the way, and then all of a sudden, we had another gravestone, Doge, and it pushed the markets into the opposite direction. All right, and then we had an uptrend. All right, and then we had a long legged Doge. All right, most people would expect, okay, since we had a, a, we had a bullish market, and okay, the bulls were dominating, we had you know a great uptrend and then we found a what a long-legged doge 
And then all of a sudden, the markets didn't respond. After that, after that long-legged doje, guess what? They continued upwards. Just like I told you, they it doesn't always mean that just because we found we encounter a doje or the hammer doesn't really mean the market will respond that way but then more often than not it does but it doesn't always mean it will continue doing that so we had a long-legged doje but then the markets continued up until we saw what we had another dragonfly doje after that dragonfly doje that's when the markets decided to know what we're gonna they changed direction and then we had a downtrend after that we had a beautiful downtrend and then we met another dragonfly and then as soon as we encountered another dragonfly doje the markets changed direction and they went up now here's a disclaimer yeah this disclaimer a disclaimer a hammer and a doje is only a signal that tells you a reversal is more likely to occur okay it is not certain but it is only for signal purposes it is not definite that the reversal will okay it is only for signal purposes okay because you need to understand there is nothing definite when it comes to trading okay these unique candlesticks are nothing more than potential signals okay it does they, they don't signal that this thing will be will will happen for sure no no they only potential signals they're only there to actually give you a hint that okay this might happen this might happen but don't sure thing all right now let's talk about selling and buying the market okay when you buy the market you believe the market will go up when you sell the market you believe the market will go down okay let's first talk about buying the market all right when you buy or you go long you believe the market is more likely to rise in value okay when you buy gold you believe the price of gold will increase you believe gold will be worth more than it is worth today or at this moment at which you are buying it all right you are speculating a rise in value of that particular instrument between now and a future point on time all right so when you're buying gold you believe that okay since let's just say they say uh gold is a thousand rand an ounce all right when you buy it you believe let's say in two months the gold will be a thousand two hundred an ounce okay that's how you believe okay that's how buying the markets go okay when trading cmd you aren't really buying the physical asset okay you are only trading the asset you don't have to own it physically now let's just let, let, let us let, let, let me explain a bit of confusion that might be there when it comes to currency pairs all right because i have received some questions about currency pairs so i just need to clarify something all right now the first current the f now we have euro usd okay euro usd this is a currency pair euro usd all right the euro is the base currency okay which is always constant the euro will always always constant it's always one euro the only thing that changes is the usd all right now let's just say the this the, the, the euro is the base currency right saying let's say one euro is worth maybe a one dollar sixty cents okay that's how much one euro is worth okay when i have one euro in when i have one euro right, you go to america you have one euro as soon as you give them a euro you they will give you one dollar sixty cents okay so that's one thing you have you need to understand now what is the usd since the euro is the base currency the usd is the code currency all right it is the one that always fluctuates it goes up and down that is the money that fluctuates right so when the usd rises 
you sell the euro. Okay. Now let's just say now since the euro is constant, when I have one euro and I go to America, they gave me one dollar sixty cents. That means the euro is more than the dollar. Okay. I'll visit let's just say you you visited uh on July twenty twenty. July twenty twenty you decided, you know what, I'm going to visit America. And you, you went there, you had your euros, and then you gave them one euro, and they gave you $1.60, right? You felt proud of yourself. You're like, wow, I got so much money for just one euro. And then December, you go, you, you visit again, and then you give them that one euro, and they give you $1.50. All of a sudden, that means the euro lost its value, okay? It lost some, a few dollars, right? One euro is no longer one dollar sixty cent, but it's one dollar fifty cent. Okay. When it comes to trading, that is a big difference. Okay. Now, just like when the when the USD fall, you buy the euro. All right. Now, buying the market. Here's an example. If you decide to buy the euro USD market, you believe euro will strengthen against the dollar. Right? When you buy the euro, you believe, okay. Like I said, let's just say in July, you, you had one euro, you went to America and they gave you one dollar sixty cents. Alright? Now, let's just say you buy the US euro USD market. That means you believe that, okay, when I go back to America in December, when I give them my one euro, and they give you one dollar seventy cents. That means the euro has strengthened. Okay, if you still have euros in your account, that means you get more money in dollars. So if you buy the euro, if you buy into the euro USD market, you believe the euro will strengthen against the USD. Right? Let's just say you buy you buy the euro, you buy you buy it at one dollar. 45 cents okay 1.4500 okay you buy it at 1.4500 all right meaning one euro is equals to one dollar 45 cents all right so you buy at 1.4500 if the market rises to 1.4600 you Profit because the market has just risen to which is it, it has risen one dollar is now equals to one euro is now equals to one comma forty six cents okay it's equals to one comma forty six double zero you have profited now to count your profit you have to say one comma four six double zero minus the one comma four five double zero which you just put it at. So you have made zero comma zero one double zero, which in trading terms that is a hundred pips. Okay, we have already explained pips. Now you have just made a hundred pips. Okay, with if in profit is it is one cent, but in pips that is a lot of money you just made. Okay, now. Selling the market. Whenever you sell the market, when you sell or you go short, you believe the market is more likely to fall. You are speculating on a fall in value of a particular instrument between now and the future point in time. When trading CF CFDs, you aren't really selling the physical item. Just as you are, when you are buying, you aren't really buying the physical item. You are just Okay, you're just speculating on whether it is going to go down or it's going to go up. Okay, now if you decide to sell the euro USD market, you believe euro will weaken against the dollar. Okay, whenever you sell in the euro USD market, you sell at 1.3500, meaning one, one euro is equal to $1.35. If the market falls to $1.30, or one comma 
DT double zero, you profit. Okay, one euro is now equals to one comma three zero double zero. Okay, you just made profit. That is the nice thing about trading. Okay, you make money when the markets fall and you make money when the markets gain. All right, you don't have to own the physical stock, but you actually can make money on both sides. All right, now if the market falls to 1.3000 your profit how do you profit you're going to minus that 1,3500 minus 1,3000 you have just made 500 pips okay it's 5 cents you just made 5 cents but then in pips that is 500 pips you understand so in trading you just made yourself 500 pips okay you minus, you'll have to minus the, the price you bought it at and the profit you've made. So it is quite brilliant. Okay. Now let's look at a chart. Okay. Say you decide to buy at this point. Okay. At this point, you decide to buy. It's 1250. All right. Just so I decide to buy at this point where it is 1250. And you close your 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 position at let's just say twenty two fifty. That's where you decide. You know what? I'm gonna close my position here. Now, how much have you made? You have made quite a lot. You have just made. Let's see. Is it? Uh, I think it's a hundred pips. You have just made yourself hundred pips as well. That's how brilliant it is. Okay, all you have to do is say twenty two comma fifty minus twelve comma fifty. Okay, you have just made hundred pips, which is really brilliant. Okay, so that is something. Oh no, I think it is a thousand pips. That is a lot. You have just made a thousand pips. It's not only a hundred, it is a thousand. You have just made quite a lot of money. All right. Now you might be using, you might see these lines that are drawing here. Okay. This is support and resistance. Okay. We're going to get to it on the coming lessons, but it is quite really brilliant to actually familiarize yourself with the support and resistance line, but don't worry about it too much. We will cover it on the next lesson, right? Because you will use them to actually get your things in order. All right. Now, let's just say after taking your, I thought your thousand pips, you just decide, oh, you know what? I just want to end. I just want to come into another position. You decide, you know what? The markets are falling. Let me sell. After you just encounter this retracement. Okay. This beautiful retracement. Okay. This beautiful retracement this is a retracement okay don't worry about it we will cover it on the on the following lesson but this red line which okay this red rectangle that i just drew that is the retracement okay after after seeing that retracement you decide you know what i'm going to sell the market support and resistance okay don't worry about it too much but we are going to cover it okay now Let's look at the engulfing patterns. We get the bullish engulfing pattern. Okay. Now, a bullish engulfing pattern. How are you going to see a bullish engulfing pattern? It's this is the bullish engulfing is this big grid candle. Okay. This big green candle. All right. Now, say, say each candle represents an hour. All right. Each candle represents an hour. Okay. You're trading a one hour time frame. Each candle represents an hour. Now it took one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, took six hours. Okay, to get the small movement of these six candles, the six small candles. But it only took one hour for the bulls to push up and to cover all 
the effort that was put in by the bears okay the bears which pushes okay the bears push the market downwards okay over a period of six hours okay even though we have this bullish candle this small bullish candle but it was also in support of this downtrend movement so we're not going to look at it much but for six hours the bears pushed down the markets and then it only took one hour for the for the bulls to push the market up and that actually affected the whole entire movement okay that is the bullish engulfing okay one candle that out that really out, out dance the ma like it it really out it really changes the whole entire thing okay the whole effort that was put in by the bears it just scratches it out okay one candle all that movement okay now looking at this at this graph as well what where can we spot any bullish engulfing patterns okay there are places where you can spot a bullish engulfing pattern all right here just here we have a bullish engulfing pattern all right we had this one two three four five six seven candles and then all of a sudden the bulls came and we had one big bullish candle one brilliant bullish candle that actually it it, it like it outdone all all the other candles it outdid all of them okay it just made one great movement okay now can you spot another one uh let's see here's another one as well okay that also showed the bullish engulfing pattern now we had another bullish engulfing pattern okay and then as soon as we had that one the the trend continues for quite a while right it continued for quite a while and then we had another one here just at the lower bottom right there by the 2019 we had another bullish engulfing pattern we had another bullish engulfing pattern okay and after that, after that candle, after that bullish engulfing pattern, the trend continued for quite some time. Okay. Continued up for quite some time. Okay. The bullish engulfing pattern, it is also a potential signal. All right. Now it also needs to be supported by the support and resistance, but do not worry. We will handle those as we progress through the lessons, but you need to understand the bullish engulfing patterns, how they, what they do. Now here's a disclaimer. A bullish engulfing pattern is only a signal that tells you the reversal is more likely to occur. Okay. It is not definite. All right. As we always, as we, as we all know it, there is nothing definite when it comes to trading. Okay. These unique candlesticks are just patterns with potential signals. It is just useful piece of information that you can use to enter the market. It just indicates to you why it might just happen. Not what will happen, but why it might happen. Okay. It is what might happen. Okay. Not what will happen. Don't think of it as a show sure way that, okay, we just had a bullish engulfing here. The market will change. Now, again, okay, it is a signal. Okay. As long as it is supported by other indicators, that means it is a greater signal which might okay it was one two three four five six bulls okay we had six bullish candles okay taking let's just take again that one candlestick represents an hour all right so it took six hours okay of the bulls pushing up okay giving everything they go and they pushed up as much as they could they kept on pushing up and then the bears took control Okay, it only took them one hour to, uh, to actually scratch out all this effort put by the bulls. Okay, it took them one hour to give one strong candle that changed the whole perspective of it. Now, can we see any bullish candle here in this graph? Okay, now we have this one bullish candle in this graph, which is right there. Okay. The screenshot is a bit blurred, but trust me, that is a bullish 
engulfing pattern. Okay, we had a bullish engulfing pattern that changed the whole entire movement. After after we had that bullish engulfing pattern, okay, that bullish candle that was really stressed down, the movement continued over a period of period of time. Okay, now can we also spot any bullish engulfing here at this point? We can see that we have one here. Okay, which was a bullish engulfing pattern, and that. After that bullish engulfing pattern, this trend continues over a period of time, a couple of pips that you would have, that's how it goes. Another disclaimer for it again is that a bearish engulfing pattern is also just a signal that tells you a reversal might occur. It is more likely to occur. Okay, it is not definite. Nothing. It's definite when it's come to trading okay you can't say this is definite this is what will happen whenever somebody tells you that okay here's what i do and this is for sure this hundred percent you might know that person is lying to you because the markets always behave in their own way okay nobody knows how the markets are going to behave we just use uh previous previous analysis or previous statistics or previous experiences to actually dictate or predict what will happen okay these kinds of things are just unique patterns that are just potential signals they are not a short thing they're just pieces of information that we can use to enter the market all right now the the bearish and golfing pattern it tends to be to room be more violent than the bullish engulfing all right as people tend to panic more when the markets are falling okay now there's this saying in in in, in trading that the markets always take the stairs up and an elevator down okay when the markets are falling they fall like for quite a long period of time they actually take a long time to fall and they fall fast okay because people panic all right when people panic, you find the market really plummets. Okay, it really goes down because people don't like losing. All right. When people see that their markets are not going for them, we are not going with them, so they'll always sell. Okay. People are more armed to sell more than they actually buy. Okay, because panic is when it comes to trading. All right. Now, in conclusion with the Japanese candlesticks. We just want to say Japanese candlesticks shed light on what happened on the instrument during a specific period. Okay. They shed light on what happened to the instruments during a time period. Might be the one hour, might be the five minutes, might be the one day. They tell you what happened during the previous period. Okay. Looking at the candlesticks, you can tell, okay, the whole of today. The markets are moving in this manner so what might happen during the next few hours okay they show you previous price action looking at looking at the candlestick or the the, the, the charts they tell you what happened and they also give you a clue of why it might happen yeah okay? even though the decision has to be completely up to you okay so candlesticks are just potential signal guides Okay, there are potential signal guides that will help you to make decisions on your next predictions or on your next movement. Okay, they do not predict how the markets will behave in the future, but they offer guidance. Okay, they only guide you to tell you, like, okay, this is why it might happen, not why it will happen. Okay, they don't predict what will happen, but why it might happen. Okay, you, you can use them as guidance to actually start your trading okay now traders often used candlesticks as a method as a method of gauging probability for future performance okay they don't just say okay this is how candlesticks worked so i'm gonna do like this now they use them to gauge the probability of future performance okay now japanese candlesticks provide us with four pieces of information now what is that they provide us with the open price. Okay. 
when the price when the when the the the, the candlestick open it has the open price okay they provided the open price the highest price which is the highest the the, the candle that going at that process so they provided it to the open price the highest price the lowest price and the close price those are four pieces of information that a candlestick provides us whether it's a doje it's a doje candlestick or it's a hammer candlestick or it's a just a bullish or a bearish candlestick they all provide us with four pieces of information the open price the close price the highest price and the lowest price okay that is is it about the this is that is it about candlesticks and we hope we have covered everything and if you have any questions feel free to send us those questions via whatsapp uh, the number is just below in the description feel free to send us any questions that we have and understand that we will do our best to answer any questions you might have okay and we look forward to seeing you on the trading lesson okay the lesson number three okay on the trading frameworks where we'll be covering support and resistance this will be our third lesson this will be lesson number three and remember after every lesson have a live class be sure to attend the live class because the live class gives you an opportunity to ask your questions live and to get answers as a slip okay we know you might send us questions via whatsapp and then asking them live really makes it easier and then we'll also cover a few things on that live class so make sure to have all your questions ready on your live class if you didn't get them answered during or you you didn't get them you didn't get answers via whatsapp because we might have a crazy schedule but then we will do our best to make sure that we answer any questions you might have via whatsapp but make sure that you have any questions for us we have more questions for us on our live class okay we will see you then thank you